Hey, let your fire come right out here in Galveston Island. Yes, Lord. Church on the beach. Thank you.
All I need is you.
road coming out right here in Dallas and Ireland. Let your glory wheels of fire, all consuming fire, consume us, consume this island. Lord, consume everything that's not of you. Oh, yes, we worship you, we worship you. Consume every problem, consume every sickness, consume every everything, any and all attitude to whatever that's not of you. Oh, consume us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As we witness, continue to worship the Lord. If you have tithes and offerings, you can bring them forth at this time. Or if you're watching online, or you, know, you can you can sow. You can go to DarylMcManus.com and sow that way. Or through PayPal, ctkc.net or gmail.com through PayPal. Or through using the cash app, the dollar sign, Final Awakening, Final Awakening. And so we we just those that tie, those that sow, Lord, we thank you for rebuking the devour for their sake. Opening the windows of heaven, pour them out a blessing that they don't have room enough to receive. Lord, give them the desires of their heart. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Your Yahweh, Yahweh, sent to you our righteousness. Yahweh, Rapha, healer, mender, repair, restore the normal. Lord, you're Yahweh, you're our provider. You're our source. Lord, there's nobody like you. We worship you. We honor you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God loves a cheerful, hilarious, prompted to give. Yes, Lord. The Lord is in their giving. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Joshua. Glory to God. Thank you for anointing worship. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Yes. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. It's great just to be out here in church without walls. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. The message today is signs. Everybody say signs, wonders, and miracles. Say it again. Signs, wonders, and miracles. These are three powerful words. The last time that we were here, which was the, the first meeting, we were outdoors here on Galveston Island. The Lord had me deal with the, the seven fires of the Holy Spirit, and in particular, and those seven fires are here right now. Because every time the Holy Spirit is present, He's here by fire. God doesn't have fire, He is fire. And so you can't hang out with fire and not be burned. Glory to God. And so, particularly the Lord had us deal with the fire of the spirit of counsel. And that fire was manifested. And those fires are here right now. But also when the fires of God are present, there will, there will be three things that will happen. Everybody say three. 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 Number one, signs. Say signs. signs. Number two, mir- uh, wonders. wonders. Number three, miracles. miracles. And so, let's look at some scripture. If you'll turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 22. You men of Israel, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man 
And I'm in the Amplified right now. Accredited. Let's stop right there. Jesus was accredited. You know, here in the United States of America and other nations of the world, there are people that, you know, they want to they want to go to a, a school that's accredited. College that's accredited. There are those that are accredited, and, and what that means, it, 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 it passes certain criteria for whatever that accrediting association is to be called accredited. Well, God has His own accreditation system. Amen. You can be accredited. You can graduate from an accredited college or accredited university or whatever and not be accredited by God. You cannot go, you don't have to go to any of those schools and be accredited by God. The only accreditation system that matters is God's. And so Jesus Himself, notice it says of Nazareth, a man accredited and pointed out and shown forth and commended and attested to you by God. In other words, God the Father accredited Jesus. He accredited Him by three things accredited and pointed out and shown forth and commended and attested to you by God by the mighty works. Everybody say mighty works. And the power of performing wonders. Say the power of performing wonders and signs which God worked through Him right in your midst as you yourselves know. Then I also want to look at it in the NIV. The NIV says it this way. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did among you through Him as you yourselves know. Now, I want us to take a look at the three Greek words used here. The word translated mighty works or miracles, depending on what translation, mighty works amplified, miracles NIV, whatever your translation is, the Greek word is dunamis. And here it means miracle working power. Everybody say miracle working power. So, the Lord's asking this question. Where you attend church, do you attend an accredited church? Most places with the word church on it are not accredited. What do you mean accredited? In other words, does God accredit the church? What do you mean does He accredit the church? If God has accredited the church, these three things will be there. If these three things are not there, God didn't accredit it, and so get out of there. Yes, I said get out of there. If it's not accredited by God, you're then you're in trouble attending a place that is non or non accredited church. Well, the church is a member of an association. That's that's not the accreditation we're talking about. Is the association accredited by God? Amen. So, dunamis means 
miracle working power. In other words, everywhere Jesus went, miracle working power was present. Miracle working power is present right here, right out in the open on Galveston Island. Right here. If you're watching this through Facebook or YouTube or whatever, however way you're getting this, then then miracle working power is available to you. Why is it available to you? Because it's here. It's either here or it's not here. He's here, so it's here. Amen. Glory to God. And so, we've wooed the Holy Spirit. He's here. We welcomed Him. We made Him comfortable. And now, He can just do whatever He wants to do. Amen. He can do whatever He wants to do. So, dunamis has got to be present. Jesus, everywhere He went, miracle working power was present. Why did people come the great distances to get to where he was? Because wherever he was, God accredited him through miracle working power. Even when he didn't, didn't even know that someone was accessing the power until it left his body. He knew somebody drew the power out. The woman with issue of blood drew the power out. You today, through your faith, can draw the power of God out right here. It's present right here. Whatever you need, it doesn't matter what it is. Alright, so that's the first word. The second Greek word is T-E-R-A-S. And it's pronounced terrace. Everybody say terrace. Terrace is translated wonders. So every when you see the word wonders in the New Testament, it's this word, terrace. Terrace means something manifested that will cause you to watch. If where you attending, is there something being manifested that will cause you to watch? I'm not talking about something that is on a screen giving the appearance of something being manifested. I'm not talking about smoke and lights and fancy choreography to try to give the appearance that something is being manifested. What I am talking about is is God there manifesting in a way that will cause you to watch? Manifest is something manifested that will cause you to watch, like a wonder in the sky, a miracle, a marvel, a portent, portent, P-O-R-T-E-N-T, or an omen. It, it speaks of an overwhelming or shocking character of an event that takes place. It is incomprehensible in nature. A portent is an indication of a future momentous event. Momentous of far-reaching or great importance or consequence. So in short, when a wonder is present, it will get your attention and it will cause you to watch. The third word that's used here is translated signs. Everybody say signs. The Greek word is S E M E I O N and it's pronounced Samaean. Say Samaean. Samaean means something distinguished, a supernatural event. It is a miracle with a spiritual end or purposes or purpose. They are miracles which lead to something out of and beyond themselves. My favorite definition is this, finger marks of God. In other words, when you leave the meeting, did God mark it 
with his finger marks. Amen. When you left, did you know that God approved of what took place? Glory to God. And we just give the Lord praise. Lord, we thank You. Jesus was accredited. Glory to God. Now, turn to Mark chapter 16, starting with verse 15. And He said to them, this is Jesus. He's, his preaching says, Go into all the world and preach the Gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs, these Shemaim, will follow those that believe in My name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They will get well. Verse 19, So then after the Lord had spoken to them, He was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the Word through the accompanying Samaean. The accompanying signs. Finger marks of God. In other words, because Jesus was accredited to God, He released that accreditation to those that believe. Amen. How many of you believe in Him? Amen. Glory to God. And so, where we go, where we preach the Gospel, there will always be finger marks of God. Lord, I thank You today in this meeting, in this outdoor meeting. Lord, I thank You for accompanying this. Lord, through miracle working power, miracles today, signs today, and wonders today. Thank You, Lord. Now, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, says this, But you shall receive power. The word is dunamis. Everybody say, miracle working power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. And then, in Acts 2, verses 1 through 4, tells us what happened when they received the power. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. How many of them were filled? Everybody say all. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began. They began to do something. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to begin to do something. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. All of them did. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there. She spoke with other tongues. The 120 were there. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. They received miracle working power and they spoke in an, in an unknown tongue. Glory to God. You see, when God has accredited a person, there will always be, everybody say signs, wonders, and miracles. In Romans chapter 1, starting with verse 16, well, you may say, well, where I go, that doesn't happen. Then what is being preached, I don't know what you're hearing, but it's not the Gospel. Well, there's, there's some pieces of Scripture that come up here and there on the screen. You can take pieces of Scripture and make it, make it say what you want. I can make it say what I want right now. Judas went out and hanged himself. Go thou and do likewise. That's right. Everything I just quoted to you is out of the Bible. You say, well, that's crazy. It is crazy. But there's a lot of craziness going on. 
a lot of craziness going on because the gospel notice notice for I am not a, Paul said I am not ashamed of the gospel there's only one so if, if the gospel of Christ for it is the dunamis notice look at it it didn't say that it has the dunamis it says it is the power it is the power so if the if the power is not there dunamis is not there if dunamis is not there the gospel is not being preached something well they call it the gospel yes paul calls it another gospel yes he said if 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 I or in, let me get my pages. Turn to the book of Galatians. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. We're working our way there. Thank you, Lord. Look at Galatians chapter 1. And hold your place there and quickly... Quickly go to the the third chapter of Galatians. We'll come back to the, the first. Oh, you poor and silly, and and thoughtless and unreflecting and senseless Galatians, who has fascinated? or bewitched or cast a spell over you. Paul is writing to the church at Galatia and he told them that they were this church was under the spell of witchcraft. He said, "Who cast it?" What do you mean who cast it? or bewitched or cast a spell over you unto whom right before your very eyes Jesus Christ the Messiah was openly and graphically set forth and betrayed as crucified. Let's look at it in the New King James. That was the Amplified Classic. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? There are a lot of places today where it's not the gospel, it's another gospel. And, and, and they, it, they, many of those places used to be alive. There used to be signs in a number of those places, wonders and miracles. But there's no longer, God cannot accredit the place any longer. One of the churches that Jesus wrote to in, in the book of Revelation, He told them, you have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. You know how... Do you know... It, 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 we're, we're not advocating killing frogs, okay? Don't misunderstand me. But I'm using an illustration. If somebody was going to kill a frog through boiling water, if they put the frog in the boiling water, the frog would immediately jump out. But if the water was cold, and then gradually, one minute at a time, the water went up one degree at a time every minute. 
then eventually the frog would not know that the water was dangerously hot. And then eventually the frog would die. Are you listening? Because the spell of witchcraft is so subtle that it begins to take hold of a congregation, takes hold of a group of people. This is what happened with the Jim Jones thing. And, and so the, the poison began to be introduced in the service. Uh, oh, the $100,000 a year tither comes and tells the pastor, uh, we don't like that speaking in tongues no more. We don't like that. Uh, if you're going to do that, put them in a back room. That don't look good on TV. And so the, the pastor, instead of having the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom, the pastor is bound by a fear of man that brings a snare. And so eventually that's relegated to the back room. And then eventually it is of no more. Oh, and then comes another one. We don't like those demons screaming out where this person got delivered. It doesn't look good. And it offends uh, our wealthy friends. And, 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 and so the pastor, he stops doing that. Are you listening? One degree at a time. One degree at a time. The water becomes hot. It becomes warm and then hot. And it gets to the place to where the congregation is under that spell. Because before you know it, it's a different gospel. Back to Galatians chapter 1. Verse 6. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from Him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. Everybody say different gospel. which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. For even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you, then what we have preached, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel, or let's stop right there, the gospel, does it have power? Or does, does it have or it is? It is. We just read that in Romans 1.16 earlier. The gospel is the dunamis. Glory to God. It is miracle work and power. So, and verse 9, as we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what I have preached, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I still please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. Glory to God. All right, back to Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the dunamis. It is the miracle work and power of God to salvation. For everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Alright. Now, let's look at Acts chapter 2. Starting with verse 38. This is Peter preaching. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you 
be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children, to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. And with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who re gladly received his word were baptized, and in that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they steadfast continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and God accredited what he preached. Look at verse 43. Then fear came upon every soul and many wonders, many terrors, many things happened that caused the people to stop, look, and wonder. Many wonders and signs, many things happened that the only way that could be described is that the finger marks of God were in that meeting. The finger marks of God were there. The finger marks of God were there. God was in our midst. God was in our midst. Glory to God. God was in our midst. Then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. In other words, God accredited the service. Amen. Can we give Him praise? Can we give Him praise? Thank you, Lord. Now, now to skip to Acts chapter 4, starting with verse 29. Here are the apostles. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to Your servants that with all boldness they may speak Your Word. Just speak Your Word? No. No, speak Your Word with accreditation. that they may speak Your Word by stretching out Your hand to heal and that signs. Everybody say, finger marks of God. And wonders may be done through the name of Your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the Word of God with boldness. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of his things he possessed was his own. But they had all things common and with great power. Great what? Dunamis. Everybody say, great miracle work and power. And with great miracle work and power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Isn't that amazing? The grace message. Here is the real grace message. If the real grace is present, the spirit of grace will be present. And great power will be in manifestation. If you want to know if grace is operating in a meeting, see if the power of God is in the meeting. If the power of God is absent from the meeting, then the grace of God is absent. Because grace is not a something, it's a someone. Hebrews chapter 10, we don't have time to turn there. Read that 10th chapter. He is called the Spirit of Grace. And those that, and it's talking in that chapter about those that keep sinning. Claiming that they're born again. That they have in, they've trampled the Son of God of underfoot and they have insulted the Spirit of Grace. The Spirit of Grace. The Spirit of Grace. So, you want to know if grace is present? Dunamis will be present. Verse 33. You saw that, didn't you? And great grace was upon them all. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked. For all who had possessions or lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold 
laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each as anyone had need. And Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Verse 5. You see, great grace is on this church. Chapter 5 is grace. Everybody say, we're in the chapter of grace even. And, 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 and certain men named Ananias and Sapphira with... A certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and he kept back part of the proceeds. His wife also being aware of it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? You see, great grace was on them. Therefore, the Holy Spirit was on them. And when the Holy Spirit is present, then the nine, He has nine gifts. You want to know if the Holy Spirit's present in a meeting? Then see if His gifts are operating. If He's present, they will be operating. Glory to God. I said they will be operating. Here's one of the gifts. Why has Satan filled your heart? How did Peter know that he had lied to the Holy Spirit? One of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, the word of knowledge. Let's just stop right there. I'm going to give you just a real, real brief skeletal view. I teach an in-depth course on the nine manifestation gifts of the Holy Spirit. I call it God's power tools. But I'm going to give you just a real brief skeletal outline so that you can understand what they are. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about the nine manifestation gifts of the Holy Spirit. And, and I like to categorize them into three categories. Everybody say the revelation gifts. Those that reveal something. Everybody say the power gifts. Those that do something. Everybody say the vocal gifts. Those that say something. And so, the revelation gifts are real easy. Everybody say word of wisdom. Word of knowledge. Discerning of spirits. The word of wisdom is a supernatural manifestation by the Spirit of God concerning the plan and purpose of God. And it always has to do with the future. That's the easy way to distinguish it. When a, when a word of the Lord is coming forth and is speaking of what God is going to do, whether he, what, what He's going to do in a nation or what He's going to do in somebody's life, that is the word of wisdom. All right, that's revelation gift number one. God revealing the future. Revelation gift number two is the word of knowledge. Everybody say the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge is a supernatural manifestation by the Spirit of God to reveal certain facts in the mind of God. And facts are always, if something is going on right now, it's present. That's a fact. If it's something that happened several years ago in somebody's life, that is a fact that already occurred. And so word of knowledge always has to do with the present or the past. Amen. Everybody say present or the past. So what happened? We were we were in we were in Acts five. What did the Holy Spirit just reveal to Peter? He revealed something that they previously did. He revealed something that was going on right now and something that they did secretly together. That was the word of knowledge. Glory to God. Word of knowledge. Everybody say word of knowledge. All right. 
Then the last one is discerning of spirits. Everybody say discerning of spirits. Which is a supernatural manifestation by the Spirit of God to see into the world of spirits. To hear into the world of spirits. And possibly even to smell into that realm of the Spirit. And so... That is that is the world of spirits. Whether it's the you, somebody sees the Shekinah glory cloud, or they see the similitude of the Father, or they have a vision of Jesus, or they see angels, or they see demons. This is the the, the discerning of spirits. Then the power gifts. Real quick, those that do something, the gift of faith. Everybody say the gift of faith, which is a supernatural. Re, supernatural believing of God to receive a miracle. Amen. You don't do anything. You receive the miracle. Like Daniel when he was thrown to the lion's den. He received his miracle and just laid down and the lion's mouths were shut. He didn't have to do anything. It was the gift of faith and operation. Amen. And then the next gift is... The working of miracles. Everybody say working of miracles. Working of miracles is a supernatural manifestation by the Spirit of God to work a miracle. There will always be action involved. When Jesus performed His first miracle at the wedding at Cana, He told them to do something. He didn't just receive the miracle and suddenly there was the wine. No, He gave it instruction. Working of miracles will always have an instruction. The instruction was, go fill these six water pots. See, six is God's number for miracles. Amen. Six water pots. Each of those pots were 20 to 30 gallons. That's heavy. They had to go. It took work. They had to go find the water, carry these six 20 to 30 gallon each pots, fill them to the brim with water, bring them back. And until they obeyed the instruction, the miracle didn't take place. Glory to God. Working of miracles. Now, that gift is also involved when somebody's raised from the dead. The gift of faith, the working of miracles, and the gifts of healings. And the last one of these power gifts is the gifts of healing. Did anybody get anything? Yes. Amen. Gifts of healings is in the plural. Somebody said, well, I have the gift of healing. Well, then you should ask them, which one? Because it's gifts of healings. Amen. There's, there is a gift of healing for every disease. Amen. That's why it's in the plural. Amen. That's why in certain people's ministry, you'll find that uh, almost everybody that's blind gets healed. But maybe they don't have much success with cancer. Are you listening? Or, or, the, or somebody, almost everybody with cancer gets healed. Or they don't have problems with people that are deaf, having their ears unstopped. And that's because it's gifts of healings. All right, that's the power gifts. And then quickly, the vocal gifts. Those that say something. Everybody say, those that say something. Prophecy. Prophecy is a supernatural manifestation by the Spirit of God to speak in utterance in a known tongue. When a prophecy comes forth, the, the, the first Sunday in 2021, the, the Word of the Lord came up out of my belly through the gift of prophecy. But there was also the Word of Wisdom on what God was going to do in this nation. Very specific things He was going to do. Amen. Notice that. But it came through the vocal gift of prophecy. Then the last two is Different kinds of tongues. Everybody say different kinds of tongues. And then interpretation of tongues. Different kinds of tongues is, you see, see, that's my prayer language. That wasn't meant for you to know what it was. All right, that's, that's my prayer language speaking to God. But if God were to speak a tongue through me as a message, then it would need to be interpreted. Amen. So that you could understand what God was saying. So that's a very brief skeletal outline. Back to, back to this passage. Verse 3, But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan 
filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself. How did Peter know that? Word of knowledge. Everybody say word of knowledge. When the Holy Spirit's present, His gifts will be in manifestation. And after it was sold, was it not in it in your it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Now, there's fixing to be divine judgment in a church that great grace was there. If great grace is in the church, there will also be divine judgment in the church. You see, one side of the working of miracles will cause somebody to be raised from the dead, but the other side of it can cause somebody to drop dead. It's the same gift. And great grace will be there. Great grace. Because grace, everybody say grace is not a something. Grace is a someone. Mighty Holy Spirit. Spirit of grace. So, then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those heard, came upon all those who heard these things. And the young men arose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. You see, the youth ministry that day was not entertainment. It was the power of God on display. Are you listening? They saw the power of God and they knew it's our job to go bury him. Are you listening? Now it was about three hours later, verse 7, when his wife came in not knowing what had happened, and Peter answered her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, Yes, for so much. See, God is merciful. He gave her a chance to come clean. If the wife would have come clean and said, No, I'm sorry, I repent. We didn't sell it for that much. She would have lived. Then Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Because she said, yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, how is it you, that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Test who? The Spirit of the Lord. To test who? The Spirit of grace. Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. Did God stop moving after that? No. The power went up. I said the power level even increased. Look at verse 12. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs, Samaian, finger marks of God and wonders things that cause people to stop and wonder were done among the people and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch yet none of the, none of the rest dared join them but the people esteemed them highly and the believe and believers were increasingly added to the Lord multitudes of both men and women so they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits. And they were all healed. Everybody say they, they were, were all, all healed. healed. Glory to God. Lord, we just thank you today. I thank you for your accreditation. I thank you, Lord, that you have accredited this meeting. 
today. Lord, I thank You for today performing signs, wonders, and miracles. And Lord, we give You all the praise for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Before we go off of Facebook Live, I'm going to lead a prayer of repentance. And if you have never made Jesus the Lord of your life, if you will pray this, the new birth's going to take place. How do we know it's going to take place? Because the Spirit of grace is here. Amen. So just say this. Say, oh God, I realize without Jesus, I'm lost. And oh God, without Jesus, I have no assurance of heaven. But oh God, right now, I repent of sin. I renounce it. I turn away from it. I make you, Jesus, Lord of my life. I say, Jesus, you are my Lord. I say it boldly. I say it with my mouth. I believe with my heart, not my head, that God raised you from the dead. Therefore, I'm saved. Praise God, I'm saved. Praise God, I'm saved. Praise God, I'm saved. Glory to God. You prayed that prayer. Then you, a miracle took place in you. Glory to God. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Glory.